This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm feeling fire today. I feel good. Still pumping off the energy from last night. I had me a big salad, man. Some Swiss chard mixed with some kale. Um, I had some olives on there, some avocado on there. Um, what else did I have on there? Some mandarins mixed in there. Absolutely. A little bit of Thousand Island dressing. Some um, crispy onions, little crispy onions that you can get from the store. Some Parmesan crisp on there. And it hit. Woo! I can still feel the energy right now. It hit. That salad hit, man. I still feel the energy from it. You guys are missing out. Those of you guys that haven't had fresh salad before from your own you know, your own um, system and your own growing, you're missing out. But anyways, today, what we're going to be talking about is sturgeon and caviar. I got a question from a viewer, um, Jesse Foster, and he wants to know a little bit about um, uh, sturgeon and caviar production. He wants to know a little bit about it. So let's get into his question real quick. And it reads... I'm thinking of trying white sturgeon for caviar production. What do you think about that? I'm located in Northern California. There are quite a few white sturgeon farms around here. Now, when we're dealing with caviar production, for those of you guys that don't know, that's pretty much the eggs that come out of the, um, the sturgeon fish. Now, typically on a, um, a, a sturgeon that's raised in captivity, it's going to take somewhere around seven to ten years for the eggs to develop for the fish to mature and for the eggs to develop inside so what they do is typically in most circumstances what they'll do is they'll uh, put the fish to death first once they find out that the um, the eggs are right they're mature and they're ready they'll they'll kill the fish and then they'll slit open the um, the, the belly and then they'll remove out the roe which contains the, the, you know, the massive batch of eggs and also the ovaries as well. They'll take it out, clean it, um, get it prepared. Then they'll grade it because that's an important thing with caviar production, the size of the, um, the egg and also the color of the egg as well, the texture of it, make sure that it's ripe. They'll grade it for the, the, the proper size. And then from there, they'll salt it using a specialized salt and then they'll package it and it'll be ready for distribution. You know, that's a simplified version of caviar production. Obviously, it's going to be more complex than that, but that's the simplified version of it, and um, that's pretty much the overview of it. Now, when we're dealing with the caviar production, I'm assuming you're referring to for a commercial operation. So the most important part that you're going to want to do is you want to, before you even jump into this thing, is you're gonna to wanna to go out and do your market research. That's the first thing. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that there's an actual market for what you're about to produce. Because you can produce caviar until the cow jumps over the moon, and if there's no market for it, you're just gonna be getting fed off caviar because you're gonna be the only one that's eating it. Right, so you wanna go, wanna get out there and do your market research first. You wanna make sure, talk to the local areas, find out where you might have a slot in there, find out if there's willing to accept it, and um, then from there you can go. Now you say you live in uh, Northern California. Now there's a, there are a few sturgeon farms over there. One of them is uh, Sterling Caviar. It's just south, or excuse me, north of, of Sacramento. And they're one of the, um, the biggest producers of caviar here in the United States. So the fact that they're right there near where you stay at in, uh, in Northern California, that's a pretty good sign that there's some market over there that is accepting that product. Now that company's been there since uh, 1988. So they've been there for a while. And any company or anyone that's running business, they're not gonna be in an area where they're not making any money, especially for that long, over you know 30 years. So that's a good telltale sign right there. Now, one of the things with the caviar production, what it appears to be is it appears to be that there's a few small companies that have a strong hold on the market. It looks like it's a hard uh, uh, entry to get in there. I know it's going to require a big upfront investment. It's a lot of technology that goes into it, a lot of equipment. I mean, they have a lot of comp uh, comp uh, complex 
technology that they use, especially when they're trying to determine if the eggs are ready. They're using ultrasounds and all types of uh, technology to, you know, to get themselves that much ahead of the competition. So that's one thing that you might be working against if you don't have a big budget. You know, so what I would suggest first, also what you should do, you should go and try to tour as many spots as you possibly can. Tour as many sturgeon farms that are producing caviar that you possibly can. Go and look and find out what those guys are doing. You know, that Sterling Caviar, when you go on their website and under the FAQ, they don't allow anyone to come in there, right? They don't do farm tours. So that might be something that you might have a problem with trying to find out if someone will let you get in there. Like I said, it appears, it appears to be a small group of people who have a real stronghold on that, on that niche. And they don't really want to get, um, let too many competitors in there. Right, so another thing, if it's available, you want to try to take as many courses as you possibly can, you know, um, to get as much information as you possibly can on that production style. Read as much as you possibly can on sturgeon and caviar production. Any and everything you can get your hands on, you want to be reading and taking the time to get familiar with. This is very, very important, and this is for the production um, area and as far as the business part. The production part, that's pretty much should become standard. The biggest part, if you're doing it for um, a commercial venture, is going to be the marketing. The marketing and the business part. You cannot disrespect that. Just because you can produce a good quality product doesn't mean that you're going to get out there and be successful when it comes to business. They're two totally separate worlds, two totally separate games. Right? When you read from uh, Sterling Caviar, the, the company that I mentioned, I was reading an article on them. And when they got into the market at first, they had a hard time getting their product out there. They can produce the caviar, but they had a hard time convincing the chefs and the restaurants to take the product because most of the restaurants, they're used to bring, uh, bringing in the caviar from Russia, which is where it, um, it, it's uh, primarily uh, imported in from. Russia, they get their, their uh, sturgeon from the Caspian Sea. And that's where they do their, um, their caviar production. That's pretty, pretty much the notion of the high quality um, caviar. So a lot of the, you know, the ones here in the American soil, they didn't want to accept anything that was domestic, right? So they had to do a little convincing, a little bit of marketing to convince the chefs and the restaurants that, hey, we got high quality product as well. So that was one of the, you know, the obstacles that they, have or, that they had to um, overcome. So marketing is, the, is a huge, 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 for any business, it's the biggest part. You know, just you can have the best quality product, but like I said, if your marketing's not up to par and your business isn't up to par, it's not going to hit. You, for example, um, you know, you got companies like McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's. We know for sure that they don't have the best burger. We know that for sure, that they don't have the best burger. You could probably make a better burger at home than what you get from what you buy at one of those companies. But what sets them apart from like mom and pop shops up the street is the marketing. They can play the game. They understand the marketing and they got the money to back it up. So that's one thing you definitely, definitely want to look in. Now, if you're going to hook this thing up, you know, your sturgeon farm up to an aquaponic system, you know, that might be a unique marketing, you know, a proposition that you can present and that'll separate you from other farms and other producers, you know, that might be a good thing. Also, when it comes to um, uh, bringing in some income, since you're going to have to wait, you know, that seven to 10 years for your caviar to be ready, for your first set of caviar to be ready, um, you'll also have your vegetables that you're also selling at the same time, right? So that's kind of a win-win situation in that circumstance. So I don't think I've seen anyone doing a sturgeon caviar you know, uh, a type of farm mixed with an aquaponic setup. That's actually kind of hot, to be honest. But you got to be able to market it and make sure that this is what people want. Right? So that's a big, big thing. Another thing is you want to make sure that, because this is kind of a complex business, complex production, you want to make sure that you have a team as well. You're going to need a team. You can't go in solo on that one. Absolutely not. You're going to get wiped. You know, they'll wipe the floor with you if you try to do that come in with a team make sure you have someone else that's experienced you know make sure you have someone else that's you know has the same mission and goals as that uh, that you have 
and then work together as a team to try to, uh, you know, step foot in the market. You know, so there's a lot of obstacles that you're going to have to overcome, you know, in this particular field. Because like I say, it looks like there's only a few people that really, really, you know, have a stronghold in there. And they're trying to make sure that they prevent anyone else from getting in there. Hence the reason why Caspian uh, Caviar, I mean, not Caspian Caviar, but uh, uh, Sterling Caviar is not doing any farm tours. They don't want anyone to come in knowing what they're really doing. Right? They don't want to give anyone the upper hand. So it's going to be an investment up front. If you're inexperienced, you're going to want to start small for sure and then work your way up. You know, if you got the big bucks, I don't know your background and your situation, Jesse, so you might have big bucks. You might be a super big millionaire or whatever. You might be able to pay a whole team to come in there and, um, and set it up. Therefore, you might not have to start as small. You know, the money talks, right? So money will get a lot of things do uh, done, a lot of shortcuts you can take when it comes uh, to someone who has a lot of money. So, you know, that's some of the things that I would look into, man. You definitely want to be researched and studied up before you jump in there. So go and do your research and learn the marketing and business. Learn that. And that's for any of you guys out there, not just with this uh, particular niche, but aquaponics as well. Get in there, do your research first, find out what you're getting into, what the market wants before you take your product and you jump your behind in there. Right. So hopefully that has helped you out, Jesse. Give you a little quick rundown on what, you know, my um, pretty much my uh, take on the situation. And hopefully that has given you um, something to look at. So with that being said, if any of you guys have comments or questions, leave them down below and um, I'll look through them and be able to uh, hopefully feature some of them on the show and give some of you guys um, some feedback and help some of you guys out uh, else out there to just get some information and to get some um, better insight on what it is that I have to offer. And I'll help you out to the best of my ability and provide whatever I can. So also you can get um, the, the free starter guide that I have below, the aquaponic starter guide. There's a free course also that comes with it. You can click on the link below and enroll in there. Also there's uh, paid courses at theschoolofaquaponics.com that you guys can go and check out that'll teach you the fundamentals of aquaponic growing and it'll get you out there growing and becoming an aquaponics god. All right, so with that being said, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, reminding you, you too, Jesse, to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>